Walmart. It is the world's eighth biggest corporation and the largest retailer in the world. In 2005, its revenues were more than IBM, Microsoft, HP, Dell, and Cisco Systems combined. The chain has become ubiquitous to American consumers everywhere since Sam Walton opened up the first Walmart in Rogers, Arkansas in 1962. The store has expanded across the continent and globe ever since, and as of 2007, there were 2,200 supercenters in the U.S. While Walmart has provoked many criticisms, it is undoubtedly one of the United States' most successful corporations. What factors have led to such success? The answer lies in Walmart's cost leadership, revolutionary supply chains, and cultural sensitivity. Walmart's success can be largely attributed to its cost leadership. Above all else, Walmart strives to ensure that its prices are the lowest in town. In order to maintain such low prices, Walmart has been a maverick in adopting new technology, has taken advantage of low cost abroad, and has implemented a successful opening price point strategy. Walmart has been a trailblazer in the adoption of technologies that could make their stores more efficient. It was an early adopter of barcode technology, leading people like Petrovic and Hamilton to call them the champion of the UPC. They were also one of the first to use computers to keep track of sales and inventory. Between these two technologies, Walmart is able to track day-to-day -day sales of any individual product and analyze how sales will do in the future based on past trends. This allows Walmart to overcome what Frontline calls one of retail's thorniest problems, getting the right mix of products in the store. Computers also automatically generate orders so that inventories are promptly restocked. All of these technologies give Walmart an efficiency advantage that translates into lower costs. Sam Walton was also one of the first businessmen to recognize the importance of the Asian labor market, especially in China. In fact, today, 80% of Walmart's suppliers are in China, making it hugely dependent on low-cost Asian imports. Because the cost of production is so much lower in China, Walmart can make large profit margins on these items it sells. Cheap imports also increase Walmart's price competitiveness, allowing them to sell goods at cheaper prices than the competition. As Petrovic and Hamilton point out, Walmart helped shift the ideal from quality merchandise to cheap goods manufactured in Asia. Finally, Walmart's success also derives from its commitment to its opening price point strategy. The opening price point is the price of the cheapest product in any line of merchandise. Walmart works hard to ensure that this rock-bottom price always beats the competition's lowest price. Products priced at the opening price point are often showcased in in-store displays to lure customers to that department. However, higher-priced goods in that product line are not always cheaper than comparable goods at other stores. Walmart has long had a progressive and streamlined supply process. As Thomas Friedman wrote in his best-selling book, The World is Flat, one of the primary reasons for Walmart's continuing success is that its suppliers have a smooth interface with Walmart retailers. This streamlined process is a product of the overall trend of retail power over vendors, which, according to Petrovic and Hamilton, began as early as the 1970s. Walmart's current supply chain represents a complete process of providing goods and services to the final user. Much of Walmart's success in the area of supply chaining comes from its ability to demand prices, quality, and types of products from its suppliers. This can be explained by the difference in what frontline terms push production and pull production. Previously, according to Frontline, the expectation was that manufacturers would decide what to produce and then try to get retailers to buy it, a method known as push production. Now, however, Walmart and the companies that have followed its model for success engage in pull manufacturing, where retailers collect information on what is being sold and tell manufacturers what to produce. Walmart's extremely powerful pull, or as Petrovic and Hamilton term it, its power to squeeze, has allowed it to influence the supply chaining process on every level and form a cohesive system. 
In fact, Walmart's demand for low prices has forced many manufacturers to set up shop in China so that they can lower their cost of production and sell their goods at a low enough price to ensure that they will earn a place on Walmart's shelves. Manufacturers choose to comply with Walmart's standards because, in many cases, Walmart is their biggest buyer. The nature of Walmart's presence in Mexico shows as an example of Walmart's supply chaining process. Chris Tilley says that because Walmart took advantage of NAFTA regulations which enabled freer trade between Mexico and the United States, there are direct links between Mexican suppliers and U.S. distribution centers. This creates a smooth supply chain with as few stops as possible before goods reach retailers and are available to consumers. Former Walmart CEO Lee Scott expects this supply chaining system to continue to thrive and even expand, as he sees the trend over the next few years progressing toward availability of more information about the supply process to everyone involved, collaborative planning with suppliers, and a common understanding among all people involved with the supply process. In any case, Walmart is expected to retain its superior grasp of supply chaining in the years to come. Another reason Walmart has been highly successful in the global economy is due to the company's cultural sensitivity and ability to adjust its business strategies to fit markets in other countries. Beginning its global expansion mission in the early 1990s, Walmart has established stores in over 11 countries outside of the United States, including Mexico, Puerto Rico, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, Indonesia, China, Germany, South Korea, the United Kingdom, and Japan. The company now owns approximately 5,800 stores and employs over 1.7 million people worldwide. Walmart didn't succeed in its ventures outside the U.S. immediately. They hit many roadblocks along the way. Walmart had to make adjustments in three specific areas to ensure success in its ventures. Firstly, Walmart has learned that it must market items differently according to cultural and social norms. For example, the company has identified that countries have different audiences based on their demographics. Flyers and advertisements in the United Kingdom, for example, target women, and in Germany they target younger white families, while those in China target middle and lower class families. In many countries, guidelines prevent Walmart from using store-wide sales and other incentives that they have relied on in the U.S. to keep prices low, so Walmart must adapt its inventories accordingly. Additionally, the company forced its American values on other countries when it first began its operations abroad. Managers were told to have employees smile at customers entering the store, which was viewed as inappropriate and flirtatious in many countries. During staff meetings, Walmart stores in America often use team chants to foster a sense of unity among employees, but in many other countries, this practice is seen as strange and disturbing. Thus, Walmart has had to adjust its methods to better attract consumers and motivate employees abroad. Walmart has also had to adjust the structure of its stores to fit the expectations of consumers in other countries. For example, in Germany, the company struggled initially in competing with small local establishments, which are typically located closer to residential areas in comparison to Walmart, which had to set up its store on the outskirts of the city due to its large size. The company learned to rely less on food retail due to the competitive nature of the grocery market in Germany, and more so on other types of specialty products. In Mexico, Walmart learned they needed to stop selling certain types of goods, such as ice skates and golf clubs, that were popular in the United States. In South Korea, at first Walmart had made the shelves so high that they were significantly higher than those in other stores, which discouraged shoppers. The company had to rearrange items to make them more accessible. Additionally, Walmart has learned to let go of its famous brand name. Over 70% of Walmart's global sales are from stores like Seiyu in Japan, ASDA in Great Britain, and Bon Preso in Brazil. Letting go of the very American name of Walmart has made the company more accessible and attractive to consumers in other countries. Walmart still faces many challenges abroad. Its greatest challenge is its local competition, but Walmart's international sector continues to grow at nearly 12% per year. Walmart's current success has come from their ability to learn from and correct their past mistakes, and if they continue to do so, the future will undoubtedly be bright. Walmart's mastery of cost leadership, supply chain management, and cultural sensitivity have allowed it to become one of the world's biggest and most influential corporations. As long as Walmart can maintain its competitive edge in these three areas, it will continue to be a force to be reckoned with in the ever-changing global landscape.